Hey, today we're going to be talking about some appendix carry FAQs, and I wanted to meet. You. I wanted to meet you. I wanted you to meet our new dog. Her name is Maggie. She wants to get down. She's kind of scared. Um, we got a rescue dog a couple months back. You guys may know a Treyu, and he's like a German Shepherd mix, like a guard dog. But he's not. He's really nice, but he's not like cuddly and sweet. And my wife really wanted a dog that was just like cuddly and sweet. And so we went and found this one, and she's kind of malnourished and has a sad past, but she's just the sweetest little dog. Maggie, some kind of a mix. Maggie, like from The Walking Dead. Um, and that's her. Hi, guys. Mm. All right, now we'll get into it. All right, so appendix carry, uh, and I am not necessarily the expert at appendix carry, but uh, I've been doing it for years. I've trained with it. I sell appendix carry holsters. I'll put information down below. Uh, so hundreds of appendix carry holsters. I get feedback from users. I talk to people. The people I train with carry appendix. I, I have a lot of experience with appendix carry. So everything expressed in this video is my personal views on the topic. It's not fact. It's not science. Uh, you're here on my channel. You're listening to my personal views. Getting that out of the way, um, and I'll just start up front with kind of some general things. Now, all of these are just kind of general. Um, they're for the average body type, the average gun size, the average holster setup. If you're not average, if you're carrying something crazy like a Glock 17L, these things may not apply to you. So with all of my answers, we're going to go ahead and just come at it from the mindset of, well, yeah, if you wear your pants a little higher or a little lower, your gun's a little longer, or you wear your holster a little deeper, or you're a little fatter or a little skinnier, they might not completely apply to you. So we're coming at all this kind of from an average uh, average point of view. I, I'm a 5'10", 170, I carry a Glock 19, uh, moderately normal ride height uh, with a backup mag and a uh, knife. I'll show you my setup here in a second. So we're coming at it. We're coming at it from that. So uh, over the years, uh, I've, and even when I first started appendix carrying, I myself had a lot of these questions. Um, now I don't have these questions because I know them obviously, but I get asked these questions a lot um, because I make some videos about appendix carry. I'm kind of an appendix carry advocate, um, and I just wanted to make a video kind of getting after those questions. Um, so I have them on my phone. I'm going to look at them here and there, um, and they're in no particular order. They're just in the order that I wrote them down in. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. And the first one here is, how do you even sit down when you appendix carry? I um, mean, you know, that's a, that's a legitimate question. How do you sit down with appendix carry? You have this thing that's in front of your waist. It's gonna, it's not gonna work, um, but it works and it works fine. I'm carrying appendix right now. I'm sitting, you can drive, you can bend, you can do all that stuff. Now, when I first started appendix carrying, the key for it, the key to it for me was to hike my pants up a little bit before I got into a car, before I sat down. So it's really getting your gun up above the bend um, is kind of what's key. So you get it up above the bend and you're good to go. Now I do it either subconsciously or I don't do it. Maybe my the pants, how high I wear my pants has adjusted over the years, but I don't even notice doing it anymore. Um, and I didn't even notice doing it pretty shortly after I started carrying appendix regularly. But when you're first starting out, you wanna go ahead and hike up your pants a little bit. So this, this is gonna happen when you're sitting down in a chair, you're sitting down in your car, whatever, you just kinda hike up your pants a little bit, get in and it's comfortable, it's good to go. Uh, I'm a web developer, I sit at my desk all day, I commute to work, well when I work at the office, sometimes I work at home. Um, so obviously you can do it. Obviously you can carry appendix. I don't take my gun out of my holster and drive and put it back in, or don't take my holster out of my pants and drive and put it back in later. No, I leave it on all the time. So it can be done. And the key to success for that when you're first starting out at least is to kind of hike your pants up before you sit. Um, all right, moving on. And this is kind of related. Can you bend over? Oh yeah, so here. I'm sitting down, I've been sitting, and it's comfortable and it's fine. This is what I'm carrying. It's a pretty big setup. Glock 19 with an XC1 RMR, Glock 17 mag, and a knife backup. So it's a pretty big setup. I'm not a huge guy. I can do it, no problem. Good. All right, uh, next one, can you bend over? So can you bend over, for example, if you're, we'll just take it to the extreme. You're, Legs are straight, you're trying to reach down and touch your toes. Um, that won't be very comfortable, to be completely honest. Uh, when I'm picking stuff up off the ground, 
I'm usually bending at the knees, which you know I hear is better for your back in the long term anyway. So can you bend over? Yeah, you can, and I can bend over, and you could bend. O- I I'm not flexible enough to bend over and touch my toes uh, without bending my knees. But if I could, I could do it. I can attempt that when I'm bending my knees a little bit, and then I can touch my toes, which actually increases the uh, bend angle at my waist, I guess. So I can do that, no problem. Is it comfortable? It's not that comfortable. It'll be less comfortable the bigger your gun is. So bending over to pick stuff up off the ground, yeah, you can do it, and it's not that comfortable, and I would recommend bending at the knees. You can bend at the knees all day and pick up the stuff, assuming you know your thighs are in shape for it. Um, next question, how do you use the bathroom? Now, I hear this question a lot without much um, context. So how do you use the bathroom? I'm assuming they're talking about taking a leak because it's usually guys that ask it. So uh, for me, I carry a Glock 19, again, um, an IP fine, just like normal, unzip your flag, get it out, pee, put it back away, and you're good to go. Um, having said that, if you wear your pants a little lower or if you're carrying a, a gun with a longer slide or something, then you may have some issues with it, but I don't, and everyone I talk to just pees like normal. So peeing appendix carry, assuming you're carrying a normal sized gun and your pants aren't like sagged like a gangster or whatever, then you'll be fine, um, just like normal. Now, number two, uh, you know, if you're at home, whatever, take your holster out, put it on the sink, whatever. Um, if you're in a public bathroom, I think people ask about sometimes, and I can make a whole separate video about this. You know, there's tons of articles online about it. But I typically just, uh, you know, take my pants down and my holster rests in between my legs there, kind of where my pants and boxers sit. Um, that way I can get to it. I'm don't not worried about where it is. I'm not worried about somebody grabbing it. Um, and you know, you pull your pants up a little bit and it's completely concealed still. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting it on the hook on the bathroom stall, especially if you're in a very public, uh, place like an air, well, not an airport, but some public restroom where there's a lot of traffic because it's common. Well, not that common, I guess, but it happens when people just reach over the top of the stall and grab whatever is there, laptop bag, jacket, whatever, and then just run because you're in a very vulnerable position that you can't react fast. If I'm taking a dump and somebody reaches over and grabs my bag, I can't really just run after them. I mean, I could, but it would be awkward. So I wouldn't put it on the hook probably just because of that. They could reach over and then they have a free gun and they run off. Um, you could put it on the back of the toilet. That's again, kind of frowned on because it could slide off. You could forget it. You could knock it if you lean back, something like that. But depending on the back of the toilet, that's an option or your toilet paper dispenser roll that'll be on the side. It's another option depending on if there's a nice ledge there. And some public bathrooms have little ledges to put stuff in there. And if if that's available, then just don't forget it when you leave. If it's down in between your legs, you won't forget it because you can't get your pants on without uh, getting to it. All right, another one of concern is, isn't it dangerous, won't I blow my penis off? Um, I still have my penis, so it's, it's not really an issue. Uh, is it dangerous? Arguably, I think appendix carry can be the most dangerous carry position for sure. A lot of people will try and tell you, no, you flag yourself in any carry position, yada, 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 yada. Uh, I don't agree with them. I think appendix carry is the most dangerous uh, position. If you're careless when you're reholstering your gun appendix, something bad could happen, worse than if you're reholstering at three or four o'clock. So some people will argue that it's not any more dangerous. I'll be the opposite here and say I think it is more dangerous. However, with proper mindset, training, all that stuff, it you can alleviate some of that. You can draw your gun and reholster it without flagging any part of your body. Um, now, holstering and reholstering your gun, unholstering, drawing your gun and reholstering your gun are the two the really the only two dangerous parts about carrying appendix or anywhere for that matter. If you're going to have a accidental or negligent discharge, it's going to be usually when you're holstering or re- when you're uh, drawing or reholstering your gun. If you're drawing, you just have a sloppy trigger finger that gets on it too quick, bang, something about happens. If you're reholstering, either your finger is still on the trigger, like an idiot, don't do that, or something is in the way of your garment uh, that you didn't, cl- some garment is in the way of your holster that you didn't clear out. So reholstering your gun if you're on the range if you take your gun out and use it in a defensive scenario uh you you are in no hurry to reholster your gun you're not going to post a cool instagram video of i shot timer oh reholster my gun in half a second no take your time look at it evaluate the situation make sure you're not um dangerously reholstering your gun um if it's if you had to take your gun out and use it in self-defense you're also not in a you're not in a hurry to reholster that gun. You want to make sure the threat's gone. You want to make sure it's absolutely safe before you put that gun away. So there's no reason to rush a reholster. So there's no reason that that should be super dangerous. Um, 
Now, to do it without flagging yourself, you just have good posture. You don't reholster when you're bent over and aiming it at yourself. You don't pull, pull your gun out when you're in an awkward situation. However, when you uh, are drawing your gun, especially if you're training, there's a lot of situations where you may be bent over, crouched, whatever, in a non-ideal situation. So when you're, when you're drawing your gun, just make sure your finger's off the trigger. If your finger's off the trigger, you're pretty much good to go. So primarily, keep your, trigger, keep your finger off your trigger. Um, now, when your gun is in the holster, if you have a modern uh, handgun and a decent holster, you're not going to be worried about, sh your, your gun's not going to go off. Your gun cannot go off without your trigger being pulled. There's trigger safeties in there involved in the striker mechanism that will not allow your striker to hit your primer without the trigger being depressed. So assuming your holster covers all that up, get a good holster, you'll be good to go once it's in your pants. So no problem there. Um, let's move on. What position should I carry? 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 11 o'clock, cross draw, whatever. Um, and that's largely preferential. I personally carry my gun to where the top edge of my slide is right at 12 o'clock, right in the middle. So if I were to say I have a three dot sight, my belly button would line up right with my sight system. I carry right there, that's most comfortable for me. Um, I find personally, and this again depends on how high you ride your pants, how high your holster is, how big your gun is, all that stuff. I don't like moving much more towards one o'clock because I find it inhibits my motion a lot. It doesn't allow my legs to get a full range of motion because now my holster and my gun is now hitting my thigh. So me personally, I do right at 12 o'clock. A lot of people do one or two o'clock and that's fine too. So that's kind of preferential. Try out some different positions, try out how your dry is, try out how bending and all that stuff is comfortable. I personally carry at 12 o'clock, so take that for what it's worth. Um, how fast is it? <coughs> is appendix carry as fast to draw from as other, other positions? Yeah, it's fast. It's, I think it's the fastest position. Uh, I'm not that fast. I mean, I'm okay. I can do draws in 0.7 seconds. Um, from concealment, hitting a target. Uh, people can go quite a bit fat, well not quite a bit, a little bit faster than that. So I, I think it's the fastest, I think it's the fastest way to access your gun from a concealed carry uh, standpoint. So is it fast, is it slow, is it difficult to clear your garments? No, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to clear your garments and it's very fast. Um, what kind of belt should you wear? Where do I put my buckle? Now this isn't really a well, the buckle part is appendix carry specific kind of, <coughs> sorry. Um, where you put your buckle is up to you. I like to offset my buckle from the front because I already have a gun here. I don't want a buckle pushing out even further than my gun. So I usually put my buckle off to the side. I usually personally put it off to my left side. Um, can you have it up front? Sure, if your clips or loops or whatever allow it, but I like to have it on the side just to decrease the amount of bulk in front of my uh, gun. Now, what kind of belt? I would recommend a somewhat stiff belt. Um, a stiffer belt just to support your holster better, and that's just kind of for all concealed carry. All right, the next question. I'm fat. Can I still do it? Uh, yeah, you can. I know a lot of fat guys, well... You know, I won't call them fat, but I know a lot of overweight guys, a lot of guys that refer to their body shape as having a tactical muffin top that carry appendix. I've sold dozens of, uh, of holsters to people that are overweight that wear the holster with great success. Now, I can't comment on it myself personally because I'm, I'm not really overweight, so I don't have that issue. But people do it, no problem. Um, and they do it comfortably. And yeah, I think, you know, I'll let people comment in the descriptions below. If you have a tactical muffin top, maybe give some tips and tricks that you found over the years that help you uh, either be more comfortable, conceal it better, all that. But can you do it while you're fat? Certainly, 100%, yes, you can. I know dozens and dozens of people that do it with great success. They love it, it's their favorite carry position. So if you're a little overweight, I'd recommend working on that, uh, getting in shape, just uh, your body is your number one tool. I, I would want to. Uh, I would want to be in shape too. So, work on losing that weight. But in the meantime, you can still appendix carry, no problem. I'm skinny. Can I still do it? Absolutely. Skinny people. It's kind of like one of the best positions for the skinny people. 
skinny person, if you're, if you're narrow, uh, your gun grip will rest against your body and the widest part of your body. So you'll be able to conceal it. It'll be comfortable. It'll be no problem. So I'm, I'm skinny. Can I still do it? Yeah, I would recommend it for skinny people. 100%. I'm pretty skinny. It's great. Uh, perfect for skinny people. Uh, now, okay, I think that's basically it. So if you have more questions, feel free to comment them below. If I didn't answer one of these thoroughly enough, it's just because I didn't want to make a video that was three hours long. Um, ask specific questions and I'll try and get to them. Um, and I wanted to kind of close with this thing um, that I just, as I was jotting down notes for this video that I coined as the three C's. Well, I didn't coin it. Maybe people, maybe, maybe people use this term. Uh, maybe people use these three C's. Um, and their concealment, comfort, and capacity. Um, concealment, comfort, and compa capacity. Now, this isn't just for appendix carry. I think this is for for any for anything. You can't easily have all three C's. Um, now, don't get me wrong. You can get close to having all three C's perfectly, but you can't have them all perfectly. If somebody tells you otherwise, they're either an idiot or they're trying to sell you something. Um, so, three C's. What were they? I already forgot. Uh, concealment, comfort, and capacity. So if you carry a bigger gun, generally it's going to not be as concealable. It's going to not be as comfortable, but it's going to have more capacity. Are you going to be able to conceal it? Sure. Is it going to be comfortable? Yeah, arguably. I carry a Glock 19. I'm not a huge guy, so it has a decent amount of capacity. Not the most, um, and it's pretty comfortable, and it has um, pretty good concealment. Having said that, would a Glock 43 be more comfortable and more concealable? Absolutely. So you have to find a balance of the three C's. You have a Glock 43, comfort, concealability, awesome. Capacity, not so much. Um, so when choosing what kind of gun to appendix carry, think about that because the bigger the gun, the less it's going to conceal and the less comfortable it's going to be, period. There's, there's no way around that. Having said that, you have a smaller gun that's more concealable and uh, more comfortable. It's not going to have capacity. There's no way around that. So that's something to consider. That's not really a question I get asked all the time, but it's worth mentioning if you're thinking about getting into appendix care and you're like, what gun should I choose? I'm not going to be able to answer that question for you, but take those three C's into consideration. All right, so that's it. Hope I answered some of your questions. Um, obviously didn't answer all the questions and didn't go into crazy deep detail on a lot of them because I didn't want this video to be so long. Um, if you have other questions, feel free to comment them below. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and thanks for liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Um, I do, if you have questions about the holster, which everybody always does, I make and sell holsters. Shoot me an email. I'll put description. I'll put uh, info down in the description if you're interested in those. Uh, all right. That's it. Take care.